Welcome to a Blood and Pigment Faction Review. We are here talking about the Dutch Privateers today. I'm Joseph. I am Guy. And I'm Dan. The Dutch Privateers are, are a feared faction of nautical ne'er do wells hailing from the Netherlands. This faction is all about ship combat. However, they do have a place on land, which, like the Brethren of the Coast, is very, very rare. Dutch Privateers get three faction abilities. They get a plus two to their determining attacker in a scenario, which is like most aggressive factions. They get to give shallow draft to all of their ships, which is uh, handy. It's nice to give some ships like the flute shallow draft. Definitely keep Joseph off those reefs and shoals. Yeah, I like that. I like that trait. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably find it anyway, but... This force also has two faction, like, actual options. They have Z-Landers, which is my personal favorite. It is when they're attacked by a unit that is six inches away or less, they may reroll a single fail fatigue dice resulting from the attack. It's great. It keeps your Dutch in fighting amazing shape. And it really helps in those late stage turns of the game. Make or break. Yes. And then they have one that's really, really cool and, you know, like fire, all firelock things that is historically based. The West India Company. At the end of the turn, if this force has more strike points than it did at the end of the previous turn, remove one point of fatigue from all non shaking units in this force. This is also really good if you're in a tight spot. Yeah, it's rare to have an ability that will help turn the tide. Usually it's if you're doing well. You start doing better, like Ruthless, but this one is if you're doing poorly or if things are turning against you, you have a chance to come back. That's awesome. I got to disagree with you there. I have uh, don't have any experience fighting as the Dutch, but I have a lot of experience fighting the Dutch. And the West Indian Company will even trigger if you're winning, but you happen to gain a strike point. So I remember being fighting somebody and ha having three strike points and they get just gained one from from casualties yeah. and they still got to remove a point of fatigue from everybody <laughs> there's a win more yeah it is a you shouldn't it, have killed that guy it's your fault you shouldn't have killed yeah. that <laughs> it also lets the the dutch privateers purposely start losing a objective if they want to give them that extra strike point and it could even be as bad as where they purposely kind of sand it bag one turn to gain a strike point and then lose a strike point the next turn because they do whatever the objective is. And then, oh no, they ignore the objective again and they gain another strike point. Better remove that fatigue again. <laughs> you love to break the game, don't you, guy? I, I do. But it's <laughs> the, the West India Company... You know, Zealanders is a is a good ability, but it requires you to get the uh, to get the ability to trigger. You need to be boarding, or you need to be kind of neck and neck with your opponent. Six inches away in a ship, or even on land, is not a lot of space. That's very close. Yeah, I feel like that's best when you're actually uh, grappled and boarding and doing that last final struggle at the end of a sea game. Yeah. That's my preferred distance to be a way. I don't know about y'all. <laughs> when I fought people as Dutch privateers, they've usually chosen West India Company, and it's been a bane to just have them pull off that fatigue for, you know, for having more strike points <laughs> than the previous turn. Yeah, that can earn you another action on several units if you go from two to one strike point. Uh, mm -hmm. sorry, that fatigue. Or if you happen to get a unit that's shaken, you know, back off that objective, boom, they're not shaken anymore. Yeah, it's good action advantage. So we have several strategies here for the Dutch Privateers. This is actually one of my favorite factions. It's right behind the Pirates faction. I play this quite a lot. And the most amazing thing about them is their commanders. The experienced Dutch Sea Commander gets two command points at eight inches with broadside and strict. Strict is amazing. It works really well on cannons and muskets, so if you don't want to board, you just want to pepper them with shot, strict is your bread and butter. Although you'd have to compensate it, uh, so we should mention that strict is introduced in No Peace Beyond the Line, but then they errated it, they kind of reimagined it all together. So it's not what you see in No Peace Beyond the Line, but it's in the errata. Now you can give your unit a fatigue to give them a minus one bonus on whatever they're doing, which is huge for cannons and everything else. 
The wording, uh, current wording of it is, during this commander's activation, any, any friendly unit rolling a test may gain one point of fatigue to apply a negative one bonus to that test. It may not be done if the unit is shaken or would become shaken. So this is a lot like pushing in a way that you cannot push if you would it, you would become shaken from pushing. But the chief thing why why this makes it uh, especially powerful is it is very hard in this game to have bonuses apply to the cannon hits. And this is one of the ways to have a bonus applied to cannon hits. It's pretty much the only bonus you can apply to damage dice. Your ranging shot, the Master Gunner can help out, but I don't know if there's any other bonus you can apply to those damage dice. No, no, I don't think there is. This also would affect swivels, too. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to have something affect swivels like this. Swivels at five. It's good. Strict is actually one of my favorite parts of playing that just kind of their signature ability not as widespread as ruthless on spanish or anything but it's rare in the game but a lot of the dutch commanders have it and it's one of the reasons i will play dutch when i do because i really like enjoy that ability for the dutch privateers it is only the sea commanders that have strict right their named guys don't have it as much which is kind of a bummer yeah of those commanders, two bear really big mention here. We have Abraham Admiral Crimson, and I'm not going to try to pronounce his last name because I'm not Dutch, and Piet Hayen, which I'm hoping I pronounced that right. They are honestly probably the two best commanders in the whole faction. You can have Diego the Mulatto, but... Admiral Crimson outshines him in every single way, just about, for the same point value. And oddly enough, I don't believe they have strict. Like we just no, mentioned. None of them do. Yeah. yeah. And the, the only other commander that has strict in the Dutch privateers is the seasoned Dutch sea commander. But he is, like usual, not worth taking. Uh, for 10 extra points above the experienced commander, all it gives you is a 4-inch more for range and commodore. At that point, you should instead pay five more points for Admiral Crimson, because he has the same command range, one more command point, very inspiring, expert broadside, sailing mm -hmm. master. <laughs> <laughs> it's everything you want at sea. He, he really is. He's so good. Like I think uh, you can even take him in a smaller 200-point game and then skip all the commanders, all, I mean all the characters, because he just does so much. Mm -hmm. and you stick him with your cannon crew in the front of a sloop, and he's got everything everything you need. Yeah, Sailing Master, Expert Broadside is pretty good. What Expert Broadside does is it lets you roll, re-roll ones when you use four critical and lucky hits. To make sure they land on something that's almost depressing, you do a big broadside, then you roll a one, you're critical, and it does nothing. It doesn't happen very often, but it's a feel-bad moment in the skill. Make sure that doesn't happen. Additionally, the one that you have to reroll is before or after you apply the negative one from lucky hit. So <laughs> if you roll a two and call it yeah. a one. <laughs> yeah. If you roll a two, that would get reduced to a one, you get to reroll it. If you roll a one, that would reduce to a zero, you get to reroll it. So he's he is expert broadside is a very good ability. And then the namesake, the Piet Hayen, he is a their legendary commander at 40 points. He's got a 20-inch command range and three command points. He's got broadside, commodore, god's blessing or devil's luck, very inspiring, bold, and indomitable. According to Mike Tunez, he was the one who gave me this strategy. If you stack this guy up with about 12 enter plug, there's not really another unit in the game that can withstand a charge from them. <laughs> <laughs> that combination of bold and indomitable is Pretty amazing. Old is kind of a weird rule. With how ranges work on a ship, the 8-inch range that your uh, commander gives all of his abilities to means the whole ship or the deck of the enemy ship that you're on and your whole ship get indomitable. Right. Even a galleon, your whole ship is within that 8-inch range. Yep. 
And all this is justified because he, I think he's the only commander we have in the game, if my history is correct, who actually took the Spanish treasure fleet. <laughs> Which is not something a lot of people... A lot of people have tried, but not something that people have done successfully. So his general naval badassery is well earned. He's essentially the Dutch Henry Morgan, in my opinion. For an affordable two points less. 40 points compared to Morgan's 42, right? Yeah. In fact, I'm willing to bet if you if you took both their personal forces and squared them up at sea, Piet's going to win just about every time. <laughs> he doesn't have misfortune at sea. No. Yeah, Piet Hein, huge character. I've used Diego the Mulatto quite a bit, too. That's partly because he is available in so many different forces, but he's a great all-around commander. 30 points, 3 command points, lots of good abilities. Having three command points and very inspiring. Any commander that has that combination mm-hmm. of abilities is very good. Worth, worth 30 or more. Mm-hmm. So what are the basic strategies you can use or tactics you can use with this faction? Well, there's a Dan special, which is close in real quick, have your enter plug, hop over and start chopping heads, which works with just about any you know commander you throw at. Ideally, you want Admiral Crimson or that experienced Dutch Sea commander. But they're really really good at just anything naval related. If you don't like to board, they're also really good on cannons because their basic sailor unit, the Zeliden, have expert artillery crew and they're really good at reloading cannons. So walk me through, if someone wants to make a boarding list, where would they, for, for Dutch privateers, where would they start? Let's start with uh, the ship. What ships are good boarding ships? Just about anything that's not a flood or a galleon. <laughs> so the bark is a good boarding ship i mean if you're in a really small game and you got enough dudes kind of on that boat yes because even if your boat sinks hopefully by the time your boat sinks you're already on their ship stealing their boat i've done it before that is the nice thing about boarding you don't really have to worry about your ship very long <laughs> no you don't i've had many players play the dutch privateers for the first time and their bark sank while they boarded the other enemy bark <laughs> Do they no care? Problem. No, because they just got a shiny new bark for free. <laughs> so anything with a zero windward, right? If you can help Four it, five. but even as long as you got that five inch move, you know, that's that's yeah. what the real game changer is. Yeah, that five inch move, that's that would usually be my categorizing a boarding ship. Also, the ships that have four forward swivel guns are also good boarding ships most of the time for me. Cause that lets you have a your forecastle. It gets some. It softens up wherever you decide to go. It, that it does. So the combination of fast and four swivels is fairly limited. Actually, it's just the Tartana and sixth rate sloop of war and the sloop of war. You're right. You know, as far as overall, I think we've already sang the praises of the light frigate enough, but. Light yeah. Frigate is also probably, if you're going for a general, not really sure what, how you're going to play, or you're going to be bored or cannon, that's a good place to start is that Light Frigate. With those fast ships with the 5 and minus 2 windward like the frigates, having that Sailor Master along can help you a lot. Sailor Masters are great for boarding ships because you can exceed your maximum speed, so you can actually move 6 with a ship like that. You take yeah. a lucky hit on your rigging, but again... They don't care about their ship. They can destroy it. It doesn't matter as long as they get to board and do their thing. And you'll never lose a mass from a lucky hit, too. Right. And then after you pick the ship, your bread and butter for this faction is going to be the Zelaiden. Won't go too deep into them, but I've sang their praises in all my articles. If you're looking at playing the Dutch Privateers, there is an article that I wrote up on the Blood and Pigment blog. Go check it out. It'll be much more in depth, and I sing the praises of the Zelaiden. They are my favorite sailor in the entire game. They're good at combat, they're good at sailing, they're good at cannons. They don't suck at anything, and that makes me really happy. <laughs> Best all-around sailor. In my experience, if you're building a boarding list, yeah, you want your Zelaiden, usually in a forward deck, a good unit of it. You usually don't want to take away their pistols, because pistols are great boarding weapons. Oh yeah, I only take away pistols if I'm doing a dedicated cannon list and I need to save points. If I'm doing a boarding list, they're keeping their damn pistols. Because God forbid if I get boarded before I want to before I want to board, that means they still have their pistols. They can hop off those cannons and defend the ship. They're just they're they're good. They're great. <laughs> that hard charger really helps when you're boarding. You know, they're not suicidal like the French ones are, the French sailors. 
with their dismal fight save. Rolling pistols on a charge with hard chargers uh, hitting on five means that you might as well have a two or a three, usually a two, for your fight score. Yeah, it comes down to about 80%. Yeah, it's ridiculous. You might as well keep your pistols if you're going to board. That's how you can tell a boarding list, usually versus a cannon list, because boarding lists will have most of the sailor units will keep their pistols. And then from there, if you want good support units, I say support lightly because I know that's an actual term. You know, enter plug or a solid unit. They're expensive, so you generally want in smaller games one decently sized unit to hop over. And even if they eat it when they hop over, they're going to take a lot of people with them. Yeah, a boarding list, I would always take one list of interplug. They're just too fun. <laughs> they get those fire pots, and those fire parts are fo- those fire pots are great at sea. Or the stink pot that can really nerf their defensive fire. You can just charge with impunity. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like the beginning scene out of Black Sails when you throw the smoke over. Oh. <laughs> mm-hmm. And if you want to get really mean with the Interplug, you can get you can give one of them a blunderbuss. <laughs> Always. But at that at that Hopefully. point, you're just being cruel. Yeah, it doesn't take away a pistol or their brace of pistols if you give them a blunderbuss. So you might as well. It lets that guy do something when you're throwing those those uh, fire pots or stink pots. Mm-hmm. I always do that. No reason not to. Yeah. So basically but. for your board and list, you're looking at your bread and butter is going to be the Zelaiden and Enterplug. The Capers are a good musket unit, but typically if I'm doing a boarding list, I want everybody to be able to hop over at a moment's notice. And while the Capers are a good musket unit, they can technically fight. They're just not as good because they have brawlers instead of hard chargers. So they're just, they don't hit quite as hard. But then I stay away from the Mility because, yeah. <laughs> Actually, the Dutch militia are some of the best militia in the game because they have a seven save, but still, you have better options in this list. Yeah. If I really have points to spare, maybe I'll take a single unit just to help, you know, maybe stack up that fatigue, but that's about it. <laughs> Might as well take European sailors with muskets. Yeah. And while I like the Jewish militia, I tend to leave them off the boat. Not going to lie. I feel like I have better options for sea battles. What, well, five points with a boarding list you want to have as cheap guys as possible and five points for a musket unit with a seven shoot is a little bit too much yep <laughs> going back to the interplug just for one second the amount of dice they can pour out is pretty amazing a group of nine of them can throw 19 dice in a single attack with two grenades three uh blender buses and five four pistols yeah and they can do that every they can do that twice in the activation, except for the blunderbuss has to reload. They could just hit so hard so many times. It's nuts. Now, I've seen you, uh, Joseph, usually want to have the Enterplog on swivels to give them like something to do. But I think on a, on a pure boarding list, you can just have them mid-deck, kind of not doing anything, not assigned. Mm-hmm. Yep. Just keep yeah. prone until you get within 8 or 12 inches, and then stand them up. Stand them up. ready. Yeah, I also like to do that, make them go prone, because if they're not doing anything, people usually forget about them, and then it's too late when they remember they're a thing. <laughs> yeah, they're basically the best boarding unit in the game. I will all die on that hill. As far as dedicated you know, melee boarding units on a ship, I think they take the cake. While they might lack the long-range firepower that I think the Forlorn Hope have, they well make up for it in combat prowess. The fact that you don't have to... I just, I don't... You don't have to... The Forlorn Hope come trained, don't they? They don't come veteran? No, they're they trained, yeah. More. Yeah. 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 So that's another point you got to stack on is to make them veteran. These guys come in as veteran. Yeah, six points for a veteran unit with all that stuff. I mean, if you make a Zelayden veteran, he's five, and then you just add one more point, you get better stats, you get better abilities, you get better weapons, tons of weapons. It's a great deal. Mm-hmm. Although they do la- uh, kind of flounder in the early game where they have nothing to do. That's a reason to to also put them on the quarter deck, the back deck of a ship, so you can have them do your sailing stuff back there because they are expert sailors, and or repair if you're taking any cannon damage. But I would usually put them prone on the mid deck if you have a boarding list, so they can do that boarding action right away. Yeah, and yeah, they hilariously have expert artillery crew and expert sailors. So not only are they good in a fight, but they're good at doing everything else on a ship. His business card just says expert. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that segues a little bit to our the other option uh, strategy for this this force is all in on cannons. They're one of the best for that list too. Yeah, they are. So you do this every once in a while too, don't you, Dan? On a frigate or sixth rate cannon? Yes, yeah. yes, I do. If I'm running a budget six rate at 250 points, all oh, that's when I take away all my Zelidens pistols, man it all with light cannons at 250 points. All those can light cannons on that light frigate will demolish just about anything smaller than another. Sorry, than another six rate. 22 cannons, 24. Yes, and they will fire, and your opponent will be not happy. The game that I played was technically with the English Royal Navy, but it's the same principle. Just get close, and if they're moving faster than you are, every deck will get to shoot it. If they slow down, you just rotate and let every deck take a shot at it. It hurts. And if you want to be really mean, get up close with Grape Shot. It's even worse. <laughs> it's not a good way to get people in the game. <laughs> But yeah, it's the same things that we said before, Stan. They're good at combat, and they're good at cannons. So even if you take those pistols away, even if you happen to get boarded, they're no slouch in combat. They can still defend your ship. And if you happen to pull a Joseph and keep your interploeg on some swivels, and someone dares to hop on and start taking out your Z-Lighten, your interploeg will pretty much kick them right off the ship or make them really regret boarding your ship. So it's a dicey proposition to board a Dutch ship in general. So even if you're playing a range cannon list against a boarding list, they're going to have to be creative to try to take the least number of casualties as possible because even if you're forced on the defensive, you can still melee relatively well, where most units typically swing one way or the other, I feel. Yeah, they just have good melee saves so they don't go down easy. Mm-hmm. And while, like we noted, you know, the French, the French are slightly better in melee, but they're just their saves are just abysmal. <laughs> They're a little bit worse, yeah. That one, that w being one worse is uh is a lot. So the basic concept for the cannon list is you just put units, big blobs of units with no pistols on all the cannons. You have a master gunner somewhere in the middle to give that extra reload. You got a broadside commander, and then maybe one free unit to do the sailing. Is that how you run it? Yeah, I would honestly put the capers on the sailing because if you need to take them off the sailing, they got muskets and they're pretty good at shooting. If you got strict, they're already shooting on sixes, and if you're close enough to where you have to pull them off, they're going to be hitting really well. So you assign those uh, capers to the sheets and shrouds, or? Yes, I, w I would. Okay. I would have them on the sheets and shrouds, and then if I if someone gets on my ship, or you know, where something goes wrong, I need some more muskets to pull them off, have them fire, and they do really well. They're really good, you know, support unit, quote unquote, for not being you know in the support unit slot. They can mm -hmm. do just about anything. I've done that with yeah. keepers too, especially with uh, privateer versions of ships. Yeah, so. yeah. I've actually had someone hop over on my ship and attack my capers while they remain in the sheets and shrouds, and oh. figured out real quickly. Oh, those hurt. <laughs> they can shoot yeah. too. Well, if you're assigned, you can't take a defensive shot, so you got to be careful. But you can if you have. Mm. You can do a half defensive shot. If you have 12 capers on a three-deck ship, because it has to be two per deck. So if you have, if you're on a two-deck ship, it's only eight capers to do a defensive shot, a half shot for a defensive fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those assignment rules are rather complicated. <laughs> yeah. You can never do a defensive shot if you assign your guys to cannons. It's just don't do it. Um, right. It's too many. <laughs> yeah. If you have a deck of... of Six cannons that are even light cannons. A light cannon six is twelve. So you have to have to do a half a half fire defensive shot. You have to have twenty four Zelidin on that deck, and that's that's not happening. Don't do that. Yeah. So the other tactic that is common at sea is the uh, small arms tactic, where you just shoot muskets and stuff. Uh, this and swivels. You could do that with this, but it's not their strongest suit, probably. Yeah, it's possible. I've played with the idea, but I usually commit one or the other. I feel like doing a small arms list is kind of being in that weird gray area where you don't want to board, but you still got to get close enough to be within boarding distance to really make those muskets effective. So it's a yeah. dicey proposition. They don't have any marksmen or buccaneers with five shoot or fast reload or anything to give them a real up where they do with the other two tactics. 
And like maybe in an amphibious game where you're maybe bringing a bark in full of musket dudes, you know, some surprise withering fire, but it's just not not something that they excel at. The one thing the Dutch aren't really good at are dedicated musket lists. I mean, they're decent, but you know, they're not going to outshoot the French and the English make up for their lack of you know, really good quote unquote musket units by just being hella versatile. I mean freebooters are a great unit and I would think they're bet they're almost better than the capers because they got that fast reload and marksman. Well, they are six it's points. Pistol. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, for one point more it's a it's a bet it's a better unit. Well you know if you do like those freebooters, what you can do is take That's right. Jean Hermus Runging. As a commander, he's 27 points. He comes with two command points at 16 inches, broadside, commodore, inspiring, and unorthodox force freebooters. That's one of the le- reasons I like this guy. Juan Erasmus Reigning is my pronunciation of it. But, it's probably yeah, correct. I've used him quite a bit just so I can get those freebooters. I love that. Yeah. And then the other good thing with this faction is European sailors are a core unit, even though it isn't a peripheral power faction and european sailors the thing that sets them apart compared to a lot of other sailors is that they have a six shoot score so when you give them muskets they become as good a shot as capers that are five points each or english regulars or anybody else (laughs) yeah a great deal a six shoot score with european sailors is great i've had a lot of fun i didn't play as the dutch but i played a campaign as the uh, Danish and European sailors, you can have a unit of them with giving them a third blunderbuss and a grenade in there. You can do all muskets, you can do blunderbuss and muskets, and really it gives you a lot of flexibility on a ship or on land, too. Yeah, you want to talk about land real quick? Dan, you mentioned that these guys were decent on land. I think European sailors are part of that, but how do you run these this faction on land? On land, basically, what we're talking about with the ship scenario, while the muskets, you know, on a small ship aren't really viable for ship to ship combat, on land, it's actually a pretty decent strategy. You know, again, we got European sailors that are really, really good with muskets. Take a couple blobs of those, hide some Z lighted or enter plug in a bush nearby. If someone gets too close, you charge them. If European sailors get charged, they do have battle harden, which reduces the number of dice they take on a fatigue test by one if it's from a fight action. So they they have a the bad fight save of seven, but they're not going to have as much fatigue. Exactly. So, you know, again, like the Brother of the Coast, they know they're not a slouch on land. You know, they're definitely not as good as a dedicated land unit, but you can make it work and you can surprise someone. When you're saying, oh, I'm going to play Dutch privateers on land and see the confused, bewildered look on their face when you bring in a couple blobs of European sailors. I played a land game, pretty high point level, I think 300 points. And I was I defended a fort and these waves and after wave of Zalide and Interplug and, inter, and European sailors came at that fort with grenades and muskets and all sorts of nastiness. It was quite effective. I see the faction also has one commander that's really good for land games, David Nassi. He has yeah. Gorilla Commander, which gives everyone within his 16-inch command range, which is huge. Skirmishers, that's good, especially for a unit like the uh, Interploic, who need to be close, and they're already veteran. So they can use that free withdraw on a spade or heart. And he also has the Unorthodox Force Jewish Militia, so you can get a drilled unit into your course column. A drilled or elusive unit. Right. Yeah, I really like the Jewish militia. I prefer them to capers on land if possible because you can wow. get that elusive or drilled. While they're not as shooty, they are, I think, kind of like the kind of like almost comparable to the freebooters almost. The fact that they can both they are decent they're good at fighting and they're decent at shooting and that resolve five. However, they also have tough which is really nice, so you're not allowed to get him where the action is. Yeah, they're naturally tough, which is kind of cool. It's, it's deal, cool man. seeing tough in the wild. <laughs> <laughs> Without a grizzled veteran? Yeah, I'm used to assigning a unit tough. It's nice to see a unit that comes tough. <laughs> not many of them. Nope. So that's good. That's good uh, option. The Even if you're doing a 200-point list with European sailors and capers, you can do about 36 dice a turn of musket shot, even on a ship, 
which for 200 points is pretty good. Like, oh, man, man. yeah, 36, 36, throwing 36 dice a turn, uh, that will wear down a lot of factions that have a low model count. Bound to get some hits. Yeah, you're bound to get some hits. Uh, the, they're bound to lose some saves. And even if they make all their saves, the fatigue is going to build up eventually. You have a nice extended range with those muskets, so you can start early in the game, too. Mm -hmm. And you'll probably be the attacker because you got that plus two to attack when you're rolling, you know, initially. So chances are you're going to be on the offensive. I need to math out all the naval factions because it seems like almost all of them have the plus two except for pirates. Unless they're plus three or four, like some of the uniques or the navies. I feel like that's pretty evenly balanced in a standard naval game. But then it becomes kind of a penalty at land. On land. Yeah. Unless the militia player or Tercillo's player just uh, skips the roll and decides to take one fortification for one point to be automatically defender. <laughs> one fortification at sea. Yeah. Just put I a he... palisade core on a boat. <laughs> Stone I guess you port. can't take on it a, at sea. On a Paragua. Yep. So what's the best way to buy into this faction, the Dutch Privateers? What I did was I got the Pirates and Privateers box because I was experimenting with the naval factions at the time, and they come with the most sailors you can, which is good for this force. It comes with, I think, 16? Because you get the weapon options, the, art the, art the weapon options, the artillery crew, and then I think eight sailors, and then you get eight Sailor Musketeers. So for a small game, you know, that's really good. If you want to get more expensive and into it, a Dutch box with the um, Pirates and Privateers box is a solid way to get into this. Because you're mostly be playing at sea if you're playing this faction. Yeah, I feel like if you just wanted to play this faction and not explore land factions, you could just buy blisters of Zalaiden Interplug, yeah, and uh, maybe capers. The eight militia in the core bot in the Dutch faction box aren't going to be very useful to you. You can use them; it's fine, but they are. Yeah, as they are a support unit faction. in this faction. Yep, so you can use. Them. And there's no other support unit. Or what's the other support unit? There's only one other one. It's a uh, Zalaiden and oh, it's a uh, Jewish militia, which are uses the European soldier. All right, uses. The image. Oh, he uses Milite. Yeah. And Milite. Yeah. But you wouldn't have to buy the Dutch starter box. You could just buy blisters of what you want to. Yeah. Like we've hit on before about C factions, like we talked about online. For a C game, you need lots of whatever the sailor is. Like the, the list that we've been bouncing around, if you're going to be playing a C game at 200 points, you're going to need around 20 or more Zalaiden. Just that's especially how many Zalaiden for, you need. Especially for a cannon list. So the yeah. four that come in the box is just not enough. You'll have to go add more. And that's why you're talking, Dan, about getting the pirates and privateers, because that gives you twelve or what, sixteen? Sixteen. Yeah, six sailors. sixteen sailors, because there's eight yeah. sailor musketeers. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good Yeah, for you know, for a start on a sloop, that's a perfect put all those sailors on the front and put the musket guys on the back and just wreak havoc. That's you what could. we did for a long time. Might want to buy the Dutch commander as well, along yep. with that box, just for flavor. His hat and puffy clothes are definitely more Dutch than the Reformado commander that comes in the sailor box. Tip, do what I did. Buy the English online exclusive commander with the dual pistols. Paint him up to look Dutch. Oh. Because he looks awesome. Paint him black and orange, you mean? <laughs> No, I painted mine green, green coat with orange trim. Joseph, oh, nice. I believe, sent me a Dutch commander that was in black and orange. Ah. Looked like Mikkel de Reuter. And it looks amazing, by the way. Still have it. <laughs> I love it. Because <laughs> he's not in this game, so I run him just as Piet Hayen, but he's Mikkel de Reuter. <laughs> yeah, that's really about it. The most exciting unit from the Dutch is the Entreplogue, so I would get at least, at least 12 of those. I don't think you're going to need more than 12 a lot of the time. I found 8 is suitable for most reasonable size games just because they're not cheap. 6 points, but 12 is better. 
unless you want to run a meme list and just stack up as much enter plug as you can and run straight at the enemy and watch them be terrified. <laughs> this is one of the few lists where you can run as many enter plug as you want. <laughs> so how would you rate this faction on a power level against the other Dutch factions and against the other naval factions in general in the game? Is it a good faction? I'll take it first. I'm going to rate them, if between all the Dutch factions, I'm going to rate them four out of five braces of pistols, only because the only thing the Dutch Navy has on them is that they can take the ships of the Horn rule, where all your ships are heavily built. So you can get a heavily built Corvette, or a heavily built Privateer Sloop, or whatever it is you choose. And that's really useful and really cheesy. Barring that... As far as other naval units in the game, I give them five brace of pistols out of five brace of pistols. As much as I love my pirates, these guys tend to be hit a little harder, and that standard Z Leiden and standard Enter Plog is a powerful combination that is hard for other factions to overcome. How about you guys? <laughs> I would say from that, uh, you touched on the only difference between the Dutch Navy and Dutch Privateers is that the Dutch Navy gets the Ship of Horn. Whereas Dutch Privateers gets the West Indian Company. I think the West Indian Company is superior to the Ships of Horn because West Indian Company will have an effect on every game you ever play with the West Indian Company. You're always going to get strike points. Unless you are completely winning and completely untouched. And then, good for you. <laughs> You've won the <laughs> game. <laughs> I will chime in and say that the sh well, yes, you know, I would say that West Indian Company is better overall in smaller games with light cannons. Heavily built can be a godsend, which is oh. where I find myself because I play a lot of smaller games. Usually, when I'm playing and I'm demoing, that's usually where I stay. And heavily built is really nice in smaller games. In larger games, I feel it's kind of wasted because you usually have bigger, meaner cannons, but against light cannons, heavily built is really, really nice. Yeah, it is. Uh, heavily built bark in a 100-point game would be untouchable. I will give yeah. this faction... Uh, we switched to the the out of 5 rating on me. I will give it <laughs> 9 out of 10, or 4.5 out of 5. Because I think that this is a good faction. It has... It has uh, relevant faction abilities. It has a good unit choice. And I've lost against the Dutch privateers so many times that they they are very respectable. So 4.5 out of 5. Um, 4.5 out of 5 lit fire pots. <laughs> are you going to drop those at your feet? No, no, I use two <laughs> actions. <laughs> Lit fire pots in the air. Are we yep. <laughs> Where they need to be. <laughs> what about you, Joseph? I would count this as a top tier naval faction. They aren't good at musketry necessarily, but I still think they're right up there with the best of them as far as well rounded and powerful uh, factions. I'll probably I'll go ahead and give them five out of five or ten out of ten. Wow. The only yeah. things I don't like is they have a slightly limited selection of units. They have six possible units. Four core is not bad, but not many options for su uh, support units. But they kind of make up for that with options with their faction rules. So that's that's good. If you want to board, if you want to shoot cannons, you won't get anything better, really. So I'll, I'll, I'll give them the full, full score there. Yeah, this is one of the rare factions where you don't really need to take a master gunner to have your gun crew work because they're already come expert artillery crew. I'm taking one anyway. I, I, yeah, I <laughs> the negative it. one. <laughs> <laughs> and the command point. Yeah, and the command point. Yeah. That's true. With expert artillery crew and every yeah, gun crew unit, them and the English, they're the best at cannons. Yeah. But even like like Admiral Crimson with the gun crew, and then you, he can just spread his command points throughout the whole ship. Massive broadside. You could technically do a four-deck broadside in a big ship with this guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crimson does wreck all kinds of face on a six rate, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's really uh, in contention for a with a lot of legendary sea commanders like Lord Hood Graf with that. Commodore, very inspiring, expert broadside, and sailing master. That's that's a lot. 
he doesn't have anything super spicy or like no no he's or just good yeah he just has all the good abilities all the yeah. generic good abilities mm-hmm. well i think that wraps up this review for a full review of the dutch privateers written by captain dan and reviews of other nationalities and factions you can go over to bloodandpigment.com and check out all our articles there we have articles on ships, nations, factions, terrain building, painting guides, battle reports. Check it out there. This has been another Blood and Pigment Faction Review. Keep your dice ready and the wind at your back, yahar.